you in here just uh, dropping in with another video on the latest Pro Tools update which is Pro Tools 2018.3 so uh, there's a few changes a few small things it's the usual stuff it's not anything major uh, as a small you know uh, interlude in the 2018 uh, development so I've highlighted a few things that I think might be helpful to you um, that I came across in reading the notes so that maybe you don't have to but I will post them in the description afterwards so there's some general compatibility notes with it um, and I have the notes here in front of me I'll try to keep on the pages I'm on page one uh, so that you can keep up if you click on the link uh, Pro Tools 12 and higher does not support video capture so some of these are reiterated but good to know again uh, 12 and higher does not have the video to the ability to record video to the timeline use another application or an older version or lower version of Pro Tools with supported video peripheral to capture video and then import it which is kind of awkward but you know that's the way it goes um, the Avid video engine is not supported with drives that are case sensitive formatted so that's an interesting one in case you have a need for that uh, you might need to watch out for that I think maybe I suppose more developers or anything like that if any of you out there do have to do that use case sensitive formatted uh, formatting then uh, let us know what you use it for because that's an interesting one um, Pro Tools 12 and higher does not allow import of WMA files uh, so I don't think that's a, a new thing I think that was uh, already there but uh, kind of unfortunate uh, and I don't think you can co-install Pro Tools 10 and 2018 now in at least Sierra or El Capitan above I think um, we could double check that one uh, some of the contextual menus are not accessible now um, so using the key modifier and the left click so I presume it's the control on a Mac and left click isn't working uh, which is kind of awkward um, now I'm not sure if that's specifically the case but they go through on page two the instructions to view the contextual menus using the right click instead which is to enable um, the right click under the system preferences and mouse which is kind of awkward um, I'm going to try and quickly set my lighting here no I can't do anything with it that is that is so annoying so being awkward with the uh, live feature here so far but uh, trying to get used to it so sorry about that um now it's asking me do i want to stop i just want to get back to the view i was on here we go i have to click it again <laughs> sorry about that so um what's the next one I, I noticed this is big this is pretty big uh so enable spotlight for best performance when relinking files and indexing in the workspace so that's an obvious one that's always there that's in all of them uh, i think it was since pro tools 12 or 11 that uh, whatever it was they changed specifically now Pro Tools used Spotlight actually for indexing the workspace and stuff I think so the recommendation was basically changed to enable Spotlight while you're running Pro Tools so that it works properly but they have put in a little alert uh, on page 3 when Spotlight is enabled long re recording passes over 50 minutes may stop recordings after 50 plus minutes now I knew about long recordings and problems issues with that but I had tested it before and I've been getting away apparently with recordings of up to two hours at least with multi-track recordings of up to two hours even with um, an aggregate IO of two audio interfaces uh, running talkback and stuff like that and running the live sound on the show uh, and that all still worked now I knew about issues in certain versions of Pro Tools and maybe it was pre this spotlight thing being introduced but they are recommending now that to consider disabling spotlight for long recording passes and then re-enable when you were done recording so that's interesting uh, and one to keep an eye on if you're recording live shows or anything long like a podcast and you happen to be using Pro Tools um, so moving on we're on page 5 again you should go through these yourselves but I'm just you bringing up the ones that I had to note and make sure I was aware of. So these are the known issues on page five. A uh, quick one here, when dragging and dro dropping an item in a workspace browser to move it to another folder, the destination does not highlight. So that's an interesting one in case you were doing said action, dragging and dropping an item in the workspace browser. Uh, you can drop the item, it specifically notes, and it will 
still go there even though the folder wasn't highlighting. So you could be hanging out over, over a folder thinking what's going on, close the workspace, open it again, and go further to fix it. It's just that the folder won't highlight. You can just drop the uh, file, whatever you're trying to move, and it will work. So that's an interesting one. It's kind of weird. Um, offline bounce taking much longer than expected. This is, again, uh, been there for quite a while since the offline came, came out, I think. But uh, just to know it, the... Offline bounce can increase significantly in sessions that have in output and uh, input assignments cascaded across tracks. So basically, as they note here, imagine track one output is assigned to track two input, track two output is assigned to track three input, and so on. That will slow down offline bounce, just to be aware of it, um, or make it much longer than expected, as they note here, which is interesting. Uh, on to page seven, no sound when previewing audio files in workspace if delay compensation was enabled during playback. So I noted this before and thought it was a bug, but it's a really rare occasion that you're going to be in playback and previewing an audio file in the workspace browser, I suppose, unless you're using it for composition or maybe in film you would preview a sound effect or something like that during playback. Most of the time you're not going to run, run into this. Um, but if you enable delay compensation both during the session playback and audio file preview in the Workspace browser, Workspace preview is silent until the session playback is stopped. So just to be aware of that, that delay compensation enable will cut off the audio in the Workspace. Just something to know. Um, automatic delay compensation cannot be applied to tracks recording from different types of sources. This is on the same page, page seven. Uh, again, if you're only joining down in the um, description below, I'm sure it should be there anyway. I'm not sure how this whole live thing went. Um, so automatic delay compensation cannot compensate for cascaded re records that use both IO bu and bus inputs to recording tracks. Um, so an example of this, I'll just give you the direct one, is feeding an audio track in record from an audio input and then busing the au busing the output of the track to another alt audio track also in record. The first audio track will be compensated, but the second cascaded track will not be. Something to be aware of if you're trying to be creative while you're recording for some reason and you want to capture, say, a DI and a guitar rig signal of something. Just know that you're going to capture the DI anyway. That's what you're capturing. But if you were trying to do something like that, you, you should probably be aware. Uh, so that's page seven. What We're still under the known issues, I think. Yeah. Um, so page eight, recording track group output featuring 90 degree volume automation while writing BCA automation can result in unwanted fades. So basically what they're saying is while you're recording from a VCA bus, that is taking audio from audio tracks or feeds that had 90 degree, very sharp volume automation, you may experience unwanted fades during that. So if the audio tracks feeding the VCA are very sharp, then you're going to get unwanted fades as they call it. Um, to avoid this issue, record any VCA automation first and then record the track group output in a second, in a separate record pass. So um, onto the editing features, known, known issues. Um, fades are not restored after moving clips using the grabber tool, something to know. So basically with layered ed editing enabled, a move, moving a clip partially covers a fade on another clip. Um, moving a, a clip that partially covers a fade on another clip with the grabber tool so that it no longer covers the fade, does not restore the fade to its original dur duration you will need to manually trim the fade to its original duration. Something to know, because you might be doing that while you're editing quickly from playlists or something. You drop something in and then move it away from what you dropped it over, your fades will be gone. So, um, and again, with layered editing enabled. Um, target playlist cannot be assigned from the playlist menu if tra track height is set to mini or micro. Something to know. It goes into more detail again on page eight on that. Just small thing. Uh, designating the main playlist as the target playlist after a new playlist was created and then undone may result in Pro Tools quitting unexpectedly, which is kind of awkward. So if a track already has an alternate alternate target playlist and its creation was undone,
then trying to set main playlist for the same track as the tar target playlist may result in Pro Tools quitting unexpectedly. So basically, it's looking for something that doesn't exist. So that's kind of awkward just to know. Um, again, rare, rare situations. Projects in collaboration then on page nine. Um, clip effect settings are lost when sharing tracks with Pro Tools 12. So um, I don't think it's 12.5 and up. Track collaboration between Pro Tools HD 12.6 and lower vote versions of Pro Tools will result in losing clip effects on shared tracks. Just something to know. Um, again, if you're using the collaboration feature, uh, it is strongly recommended that you do not log in, log in the same project on multiple systems using the same Avid Master account login. That's since it came in pretty self-explanatory. Um, the default project media cache is a weird one. I haven't used the cloud collaboration enough to comment with experience on this, but basically they're telling us that the project media cache should be moved from its default location on the, I think it's in the documents folder. Yeah, um, to anywhere else they say, any Pro Tools compatible drive, which is kind of, it's a strange one, but um, just something to know if you are collaborating online, that the project media cache should come from somewhere else other than that, for some reason, uh, again, what was it? Um, you can change the location. Uh, yeah, I think it's something to do as well. They me mention Pro Tools, multiple Pro Tools machines running on a network, which would be in a facility of some sort in a large studio. So probably not something for us just collaborating online to worry about so much, but I think it's the general uh, recommendation. So look that one up if you are collaborating with anyone online. Uh, when sharing a track with plugins such as Melodyne or Space, only the waveform cache inside the plugin is uploaded and shared, but not the reference audio files. So uh, basically what it's saying is if you have impulse responses and waveforms associated with the manipulation involved in things like Melodyne or Space, uh, just two examples, Space being the reverb pr plugin that's available with the new version of Pro Tools, um, Media assets for plugins such as Melodyne or Space that use external media like a waveform cache or impulse responses may not always be copied with the share, shared tracks to the cloud for use by other collaborators. Really only matters if you got your own impulse responses or ones from offline and put them into space or something like that. Um, just something to be aware of again if you're online. So a weird I.O. setup one that's been there a good while, but I just, when I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, I'm forgetting that in terms of general, like people are updating and stuff. Uh, master of faders assigned to Mac output buses function only on that specific bus, not for the output channel as a whole. So, excuse me, say you have um, your main rig, like the speakers behind me, and then your kind of reference, like the hi-fi just there, and you, um, have a master fader on your output path one and two. So bus one and two, which is mapped to the output path one and two. So it's a bus that is mapped to the output path. And you've got your maxim limiter for safety while you're mixing on the ma that master fader. When you reference on your hi-fi speakers below, if you're using, you know, output three and four instead, then you're not going to have that maxim limiter on the channel just to be aware. So uh, I just, I did that loads in the past and I've screwed up headphones and all sorts, not knowing I was referencing an unlimited signal and stuff like that. So weird, but uh, something to keep, something to keep an eye on. Uh, there's more uh, under file and disk management. There's just small things on relinking and things. Interesting elastic audio things to keep an eye on. Uh, maintaining phase coherency with elastic audio pitch processing when it's enabled on a track switching from polyphonic, rhythmic, or X, for, X form to monophonic or very speed can disrupt phase coherency. To preserve that co coherency in this case, be sure to clear all elastic audio pitch processing from the track before switching to the monophonic, monophonic or very speed algorithm. So it's a weird one, but I'm not sure exactly why it might be. Uh, but especially, I suppose, if you were working with rendered processing, you'd want to be aware of that because you're going to completely change the phase then. Um, obviously, I suppose you're, you're doing that to a certain extent anyway, but it should maintain coherence if you're not overstretching stuff. And then obviously, if you're trying to do very speed or something like that after the fact, then for some reason, the phase is going to change, I think. But something to keep an eye on if you are using elastic audio. Uh, drift in an audio file may, may occur when using elastic audio from the monophonic or X-form algorithms. That's pretty standard. That's what we've had for a long time. 
Um, and they're talking about overstretching it as well, which is kind of in effect anyway, but just something to know if you're only using it for the first times. Um, el elastic audio clips on playlist lanes are not rendered. So that's just good to know, basically, that you would need to bring those to the target or main playlist, I think, um, the main playlist, uh, so that you could render out that stuff. So it's good to know if you're, you know, editing elastic audio uh, in a playlist somewhere because you're like, OK, I'll fix this guitar take before I send it up to the main playlist. But you just go to render what you've done. Everything that's in the playlist won't render or on, in the alternate playlist won't render. So just just keep an eye on that. Um, so again, I'm hoping not to be too long with this track commit and track freeze on page 12 starts on page 12. Um, oh, excuse me. I thought we had more on that. No. So um, basically, yeah, these are all the things that I've come across in the notes that might affect me and therefore you there's way more than like we have the um categories like midi plugins a lot of them are the same stuff the same issues that's been there for a while hdx systems hd native pcie systems hd native thunderbolt uh control surfaces more notes on video things like um quick time and stuff like that so you should definitely have a read through that if you're working with video um and then third party video, video peripherals, uh, video satellites, general localization. Um, there was a quick note on that one. AAF, no MF, sequences with non-English characters import with garbled clip names or won't relink. That's in Pro Tools 7. So just something to be continuously aware of. Um, so then there's known issues with the core audio drivers like pops and clicks uh, when you're changing sampler rates and stuff. Again, have a look through that maybe um because i think there was um there was some buffer size yeah in, in cubase tractor live and certain other applications you can select butter buffer sizes butter sizes that may be incompatible with pro tools hardware so selecting the incompatible buffer sizes results in distorted distorted sound and may cause other problems so just select ones that are compatible if you're doing that uh, i presume that's referred to like having an M box in use with live or something in Ableton live. So um, there's no issues with their audio interfaces. Then they go through uh, Pro Tools aggregate I IO using the Mac built in audio. There's a quick note there. You get the uh, SIG 101 error when pre previewing audio with Pro Tools aggregate IO. When pre previewing audio in the import audio dialog with Pro Tools aggregate IO selected as the current engine in the playback engine dialog, and with new Mac OS file view set to columns view, view, you may encounter a 6101 error. Try changing the Mac OS file view to co from columns list from columns to list or icons view, or use any of the built-in audio devices instead of Pro Tools aggregate I/O to avoid this problem. Very strange. Uh, again, maybe you come across it, and there's your answer. Um, and that's it then we're on to page 24 we were on page 22 and i highlighted nothing in between but something to read anyway and go through so not too bad keep this under 20 minutes um let me think is there anything else obviously the update comes up in your avid application manager as pro tools 2018 2018.3 if you're using media composer and i have the first version there's a new one of that out as well um 2018.3 and there's also a new U control application which will be coming I suppose in the Pro Tools control video when we do that so um, I'm hoping nobody commented I'm hoping of audio uh, and that that wasn't an issue because I'm, I'm actually using a mic with the phone at the moment so uh, apologies for the quality of the video can't even set any kind of a, a lighting here oh I could have done that but some reason yeah i don't want to mess around at the end of the youtube stream but for some reason i was able to before when I even recorded to directly upload to youtube i was able to kind of tap the screen and we'd be able to kind of set the lighting but for some reason that isn't working so what i did was held my hand up set the lighting off the hand and then lifted it and it wouldn't change it wouldn't auto correct but anyway you know tech details so um yeah comment below if you have any issues with 2018.3 installing it all that kind of stuff and i uh, will see you in the pro tools control video soon cheers guys